Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells. I'm a senior character artist. In this particular tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at an underused uh, palette in ZBrush that has actually a lot of functionality to it, and that's the deformation palette. If I go ahead and click on it, the deformation palette has a lot of things going for it and is often overlooked. And that's a shame because it actually offers quite a lot of, of uh, capabilities. And certainly it would be something that, that uh, would come in handy for a lot of different uh, modeling aspects. I know, in fact, I use quite a number of the, uh, these particular tools. Uh, actually, I do a couple of them, uh, quite a lot. Actually, I use the inflate a lot. Uh, I've used the squeeze. I've used flatten. I've used the size quite a bit, actually. Um, it comes really, uh, it comes in handy. I got to tell you, uh, there's a lot going for it, and I, I really enjoy it. That, now, there's a lot of different things uh, that go with this. A, a lot of different parameters for these things. I mean, you can go through each and every one of them. We'll go through some of the main ones that I think you're likely to end up using. I'm going to go ahead and turn the gradient off in my background. I, f I actually find it rather distracting. So I'm going to go to Document, Range, and I'm going to pull the slider all the way to the left so it says zero. As you can see, I have a nice gray background now. Okay. First thing I'm going to do just to illustrate is I'm going to mask off half of this sphere, and I'm going to invert it, and then I'm going to go click on this size. Now, if you go towards, if you take any of these sliders and move to the right, you're going positive. You see that? You see how it's scaling outward? If you go negative or to the to the left, you're going as in it's an inversion. Okay. There you go. A great way to turn around and get a lot of good shapes right off the bat. I could go ahead and blur this if I'm if I'm just I'm I'm holding down my control key and clicking on my mask and just blurring it. You can also always go to your actual uh, masking palette and click on the blur mask if you want to do it that way. And then I can go ahead and go back to our size and go ahead and like scale it up a little bit. Now as you can see, because it's a blurred edge, it actually will do a nice soft uh, scaling out and resizing. The nice thing is I can then turn around and Actually, I'll clear the mask. I did a control click in the background to clear the mask. If I grab this and I blur this a little bit and invert it, I can now do the size and go in this direction. So you can see right off the bat, there's a lot of uh, different things you can do with shapes and create new shapes out of it by simply uh, changing the size, etc. on that. I'm going to go ahead and do a control Z to undo everything that I've done so far. Okay. And again, we're just using a, a regular uh, Z-sphere that comes default in, the, in, in um, ZBrush. Okay. All right. Another one that I like to do now. The size is different. Actually, I should let, let me show you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just invert this mask. Size is different than inflate. Let me show you size again. If we do size, you'll notice it keeps an orientation that it scales it out uniformly so I get a nice clean edge okay if I inflate it to something similar if I inflate however it actually will scale it out in a slightly different math method it's using different calculations for it I actually find oftentimes that inflate actually is a is a cleaner interpolation than size but it depends on what you're working with now inflate inflate balloon as you can see, it slowly scales up. That actually starts to uh, create a bit of a uh, beveling to it. Not quite a beveling, but something similar to it because it's actually puffing it out in all directions. But it could be something that you could that could be handy for what you're dealing with. You know, I don't know. But uh, again, it's one of those things that that is is actually I find to be a really uh, good good. Uh, Deformation is a great little suite. And again, now this is tapering. Depending on obviously what your object is going to be, I can taper it all the way down in the one direction or I can taper it in another direction. Now that will affect actually 
the side view, you will, it affects how it scales it out. But again, it could be something exactly what you're looking for. You know, I don't know. Twisting, it actually literally tries to do what it says. If I clear my mask and go for a twist, nothing happens. Something has to be, you know, like masked out. So let's try just doing something like this. And let's try a twist. See, you can do a twist and then you can do an inflate. Again, interesting shapes. Let's go ahead and just add a little bit of detail in and let's try to do a flatten. Now if I click a flatten, you see what happens is it's actually scaling it in and it flattened that whole region right there. Now again, I don't know that you might use something like that, but it definitely comes in handy. I can do the same over here. You're flattening it. It's just basically like taking it and creating a beautiful flat little surface. Look at that. There's a lot of different tools and a lot of different things you can do with uh, the um, deformation tab. It just depends on what you're looking to do with it. Uh, the bends again that can be kind of interesting if you then turn around and let's do a size as well you can create some really awesome shapes with this but again it's one of those that often gets overlooked because most people you know don't know what it's for or what you can use it for and again it's one of those where I like to you know I use it for a number of different things and by the way this is a really easy way to turn on noise too See how you can create a nice fuzz on a ball. If this was like a tennis ball or some sort of fun ball, you can mask it out and add in a noise. We can turn around and let's go ahead and mask this. We'll invert and we'll create just a subtle noise. Not so hard. So there you go. Very quick, very easy. You can always smooth some of that down. I'm holding down my shift. And you can smooth some of that out if you needed to. There you go. All right. Gravity is a fun one. I've actually used gravity for a couple different things. But check it out. It's all in one direction. Now, it's in the direction of Y right now because that's what it's set for. This is X, Y, and Z. You see those little icons there? If I hit Control Z, let's set it for X only. Turn off the Y. There you go. Awesome. Let's do it for Z only. There you go. And it slid it right off, right in the Z. Or you can do it for X, Y, and Z and slope the whole thing down. It sloped it in, it sloped it down, it sloped it around. That's great. But that's the beauty of it, is any one of these tools can be used just in the X, the Y, or the Z. Now they do have their particular defaults. This one was Y. Um, but you can play around with it and got a, get a lot of different interesting effects. In fact, if I were to really smooth this out a little bit more, let's, and let's grab this. Okay, let's zoom in. Let's try the noise just in the X only. So if I scale up the noise, you can see it's actually semi-directional. You see that? And you notice how it's actually it's actually harsher on this side than it is on that side. Because again, it's using it's it's going in one direction, which is basically just the X. So there's a lot of different a lot of different things you can do in uh using the deformation tab. And I can only suggest you guys, you know, play around with it because there's so much that can be done with it. So many different things you can do. And you can always add in. In fact, that's another thing that I really love about it. Like, let's say we're going to scale this section up. We'll just blur out the mask out. I can inflate it, and then I can inflate it again, and then I can inflate it again. But it keeps its uniformity as it's doing it. It's really crinkling out here because, of course, I didn't have... I didn't have... Uh, I hadn't smoothed out that backside yet, and I just did a smooth right now, and it actually is doing this really interesting thing. Again, you can get some really good effects with exploring using tools that you've been using, but you know, in slightly different ways. You can get some really cool effects. Actually, that's not bad for a 
kind of a sci-fi look. A great way to see something get eaten, you know, if you had some plating and get it slightly eaten out, etc., you know, worn away. But again, the deformation tab is really something that you guys should try playing with. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with it. And it's really kind of up to you as to what you're going to do. Let's scale this size up. There you go. Oh, look at that. And then, of course, when you when you hit Control D to subdivide, it then smooths it out a little bit more, and I can then smooth this out. This was the rotate, by the way. There's just so many different things you can turn around and do with deform, and it's one of those again one of those tools that is often overlooked, but you can get a lot a lot of effects out of it. Uh, I use I use a couple different uh, main features in in the deformation tab on a lot of my models when I'm working on them. I can't tell you how, how handy they come in. Anyway, this has been a very quick tutorial, a very quick introduction. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thank you.